Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We will, we will solve problems that you will find in the, in the third edition of the official study, official study guide of the GRE. The official study guide, GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy the third edition. We'll begin our process today of our preparation, that is, for the exam, with page number 115. Turn to page number 115. Make sure you have the book in front of you. There you will find math problems. That's what we will start with. And these are quantitative comparison questions. Our job is to compare the two quantities. There's, here's what we have in the first column. First column says, least, least prime number that is greater than 24. And in column B, we are told we have the greatest prime number that happens to be less than 28. Well, in the first column, we are asked to find out or locate the least prime number, the smallest prime number that, have, that happens to be more than 24. The smallest prime number that happens to be greater than 24. We have a, well, the, if we want to locate a prime number, the starting point always is a good idea to start out with all the odd numbers because if it's a prime number, then by definition it must be an odd number. The only exception to that rule, as we know, is, is 2. 2 is the only even number that happens to be a prime number. Anything other than 2, if it's a prime number, it must be an odd number. So let's make a list of all the odd numbers that are more than 24. See what we find. So we get 25, we get 27, we get 29, and so on and so forth. But 25 is not a prime number. So it's, no, neither is 27. There you go. 29 is the least prime number. It's the, smallest, it's the smallest prime number that satisfies the condition. The condition being that it has to be more than 24. It is the smallest prime number that happens to be more than 24. Once we have the answer to this column, we go to this column here, it says the greatest prime number less than 28. It doesn't matter now, it doesn't matter what the greatest prime number is, because it said it has to be less than 28. Well, if it's less than 28, then what it is here is a mood point. It's a mood point. What we have in this column is a mood point, because by definition, it has to be less than 28. And something less than 28, of course, we're comparing with 29. Of course, something less than 28 is less than 29, obviously. The answer is A. If you want to learn this vocab word that I just used here, or mood point that is, we learned it already. Vocabulary day seven. If you're interested, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you will find on my channel some vocabulary videos that will help you improve your score in the GRE, that will help you improve your vocabulary. On day number seven, we learned this concept. What is a mood point? A mood point is something that is that you can discuss all you want only for theoretical purposes it has no practical implication it has no practical implication you can discuss it as far as the theory is concerned for theoretical purposes if we wanted to we could sit there and ask ourselves what is the greatest prime number less than 28 and we could have found it but it would have had no bearing on the answer the answer we already know is a it's a moot point it has no practical implication as far as we're concerned here as to what that number is, because whatever it is, is less than 28, and if it's less than 28, of course 29 is going to be more than that. The answer is A. What the answer is to second column is a mood point. Let's move on. So as, one more time, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, uh, just type in just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 7, the video will pop right up. Because down the road, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we will also do some verbal question from the from the third edition that I just showed you and there you will find that it is a test of nothing but vocabulary you cannot possibly under understand a passage you cannot possibly expect you to understand a sentence even a very simple sentence very short sentence if there are three four or half a dozen words that you have never seen there is one one sentence there one one sentence completion that I found in the in the, in the new edition the third edition where I counted 27 vocabulary words in one sentence including the answer choices because there are words in the answer choices that people would not understand and there were 27 of such words that I think that the average person will have trouble with. Vocabulary is a must. 
Let's go to the next two. Watch the, watch the video. Number two. Number two says, My Lionel is younger than Maria. Lionel is younger than Maria. And here we have twice column A. We have twice Lionel's age. And in column B here, we have Maria's age. What do we do? Well, very simple. Just plug in numbers. Just plug in anything that you like. As long as you satisfy the condition, the condition here is that Liner must be younger than Maria. So let's make something up. Let's pretend Liner is 5 and Maria is 10. Just, just for the hell of it. It just came out of nowhere. So if Liner is 5, twice Liner age is going to be 10. Maria we're pretending is 10. So, so far the answer is C. They are equal to each other. So far the answer is C. Our job is to make sure that this answer never changes. Because in the quantity to comparison question, when we pick answer choice A, what we are claiming is that the quantity in column A is always greater. When we, pick, when we pick answer choice B in the quantity to comparison question, the claim that you are making is that the quantity in column B is always, always, always greater. And when we pick answer choice C, the claim that we are making is that the two quantities are always equal. But that is not going to be the case here if it turns out that the Maria, instead of being 10, if she happens to be a 1000. If she happens to be a thousand years old, and now Lionel's age is 10, now the answer is B. Before it was C, we have conflicting answer, therefore the correct answer is D. Do you understand? Let's go to the next one, number 3. I put down thousand for dramatic effects. If you don't like thousand, if you don't want Maria to be that old, type in 100, put in 50. Put in whatever you like. I was just trying to make a point that you can put in whatever you want and you will see that the answer will change. Number three. Number three. Column A is this and column B. In column A we have 54% of 360 and here we have 150. But well, we, we know that half of half of 360 is 180. Everybody knows that. Well, if 50% if 50% is already more than 150 if 50% of 360 is already more than 150 then 54% of course is going to be greater you don't have to waste your time trying to figure out the exact 54% just understand that if half of 360 is already 180 if half of 360 is already 180 then then 54% whatever whatever the bloody hell that is it's got to be more than 150 the answer is a let's move on Question number four. Question number four appears on the next page, page 116. We are now on page 116. We are given a, 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 a picture here that looks something like this. P, Q, and R. And here is point S. And we are told that P to Q is the same length as P to R. P to Q is the same length as Q to R. Keep in mind, pictures are not drawn to scale in the GRE. So we have to go by what they tell us, not what they show us. And if you don't like the way it's drawn, redraw your own one. It's not a big deal. Just redraw your own one. We know that PQ, PQ has to be equal to PR. So redraw if you like. An isosceles triangle. P, Q, and R. And now PQ is the same length as PR. If it makes you feel better. Point S. Point S. Point S is somewhere here. Or is it? Maybe it's here, or maybe point S is here, or maybe point S is over here. Who knows where point S is? They just give you one point, they just told you one point, and they tell you that it's S, but we know nothing at all as to where exactly it's located on this line. We do not know where point S is located on the line PR. We cannot go by the picture, we cannot go by what it looks like, unless we are told some information which gives us the exact location of point S. We cannot compare. We cannot compare the distance PS to SR because 
PS here is very little here, SR is very large, in which case the answer here would have been, if we drew it like this, the answer here would have been B, but what if PS happens to be here, if point S happens to be here, in which case, in which case, in which case the distance from P to S is going to increase. P to S is greater and S to R is smaller. The answer in this case would be A. We do not know. The answer here is D. Let's move on. Number 5. And number 5 appears on page number 117. We are told that y is equal to 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. And we are being asked to compare column A to column B. x and y. What can we do here? Well, we have two choices. We can either solve it theoretically or we can plug in some numbers. Whatever, whatever you find easier. If you want to understand it theoretically, or if you want to solve it theoretically, then what we need to understand here is that this is a quadratic equation. Of course it's a quadratic equation. If you were to set this equal to 0, if you were to set this equal to 0, in other words, plug in the value for 0 for y. Okay, listen carefully. If you were to pretend that y is 0, then the quadratic equation what we have is this one. And you can clearly see that the product has to be negative and the sum has to be the sum of the two factors has to be 7, but the product is negative. The only way the product is going to be negative is that we're going to have two roots. We're going to have two roots. Listen carefully. We're going to have two roots. One of, is, one of them is going to be positive root. One of them is going to be negative root. This quadratic equation is going to have two roots. One is going to be positive, one is going to be negative. When the root is positive, of course positive number, whatever it is, is more than 0. But if you have a negative root, it's going to be less than 0. The answer is D. But like I said, if you don't like this way, you can plug in numbers. You can plug in numbers here, and we can do that too if you want. Let's plug in, let's do it a different way. Here's our x and here's our y. Let's pretend that x is 0. If you plug in x equal to 0 in this equation, this is 0, this is 0, and y is going to be negative 3. If x is 0, y is negative 3, so then the answer is A. But if x is 1, then we're going to get here 2, 2. 1 square is 1, so we get to get 2, plus 7, 2 plus 7 is 9, minus 3, we're going to get 6 here. y is going to be 6. When x is 1, y is going to be 6. When x is 1, y is 6, now the answer is D. As you can see, we're getting conflicting answer. The answer is D. The answer is D. Let's move on. Problem number 6. Problem number 6. In problem number six, which is on page number one eighteen, problem number six, we have to work to compare column A and column B. We are asked to compare three y plus two over five versus y. That's it, versus y. And what else we are told? We must, be, we must pay attention to what is given in the middle of the two columns. In the middle of the two columns we are given that y is more than 4. y is more than 4. So let's just, let's just see what we can do here. Let's just solve for y. Let's just solve for y, see what happens. Okay. I'm not sure if I want to show all the baby steps. I will try to show you, uh, I will try not to show you all the baby steps. Let's multiply both sides by 5. This is what I mean by baby steps. I shouldn't have to do this part. I, I can just put 5 there and you should, we should be able to understand what happened. If you multiply both columns by 5, 5 is going to go away and we end up with 3y plus 2 versus 5y. Are you with me so far? Let's bring all the unknowns to one column and all the known quantities to the other column and the convention dictates, the tradition dictates, we bring the unknown to the list. Actually, if we, if we bring it here, if we subtract, if we subtract 5y from both columns, we're going to end up with a negative coefficient. I don't like it. Let's subtract, let's subtract 3y from both columns. This is going to go away, and we have 2 here, and here we have 2y. Are you with me so far? Divide both columns by 2, and we end up with 1 versus y. But y, we already know, is more than 4. So essentially, what this question is asking is, are you able to tell me which quantity is bigger, a 1, or something that is more than 4. Can you tell me which one is bigger? 
Is one bigger or is something more than four bigger? It's a silly question. Answer is B. Of course, why is more than four? If y is more than four, then obviously it's more than one. Obviously it is more than one. Alright. Now, if you don't, if you, there is a slightly different approach to this also, if you like, I can show you very quickly a slightly different approach, but this is, this is one approach. Here's the other approach. Okay, this is what we are given to us to start out with. It's basically the same thing, but a little bit different. Let's break it up. 3y over 5 plus 2 fifths. And here we have y. Subtract, subtract 3y over 5, subtract 3 fifths y. In other words, subtract 3 fifths y, subtract 3 fifths y from both sides. And if you do that, 3 fifths y is going to go away. And here we end up with 2 fifths versus 5 fifths y minus 3 fifths y is a 2 fifths y. Divide both columns by 2 fifths. If you divide both columns by 2 fifths, we end up with 1 versus y. Same as before, same, same thing. Of course, 1 is smaller than something more than 4. Let's move on. Let's move on. In the next column, in the next page rather, I meant to say, On page number 100 and 119, we have 20 raised to 30 minus 29 raised to 2 raised to uh, 2 raised to 30 minus 2 raised to 29 over 2 versus 2 raised to 28. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Again, get rid, get rid of the denominator first. It's always a good idea to get rid of the denominators. I, I don't like dealing with bloody denominators. Let's multiply both columns by 2. So 2 goes away. And here we end up with 2 raised to 30. Two raised to 30 minus 2 raised to 29. And here we end up with 2 raised to 28 times 2 raised to 1, which is same as 2 raised to 29. With me so far? Alright. Now let's add. Let's add 2 raised to 29 to both columns. If we add 2 raised to 29 to both columns, they're going to drop out. Here we end up with 2 raised to 30 in this column. And here we end up with 2 raised to 29 plus 2 raised to 29. 2 raised to 29 plus 2 raised to 29 is 2 times 2 raised to 29. A plus A, of course, is 2A. 2, 2 times 2 raised to 29 is same as 2 raised to 1 times 2 raised to 29, which is 2 raised to 30. 2 raised to 30 versus 2 raised to 30, the answer is C. Answer is C. Now listen, if you do not like the pace of this, uh, these uh, so problems that, that we just went through, if you feel that this was too fast a pace, if you want to, if you want to watch this video uh, problems being solved at a much slower pace, here's what you can do. I need room, so I need to raise something here. Or I can just put it in the middle. The same problems that we just solved, let me put the cap on before this gets dry. This exact same problem that we just solved already appeared in the very first edition of the GRE that appeared in 2010, I believe, seven years ago. So about five years ago or so, we, I solved every single math problem that appeared in this question, every single math problems. And you will find the solutions to all of them on my channel. And if you're interested in watching the solutions to the same exact problem that we just did at a much slower pace, as I said, you will find the solutions to all of them from day from day one to day five. Just type in GRE math day one and it will pop right up. GRE one day two and so on and so forth. What we did, what I did over there in five different videos is what we did today in one video. Uh, like I said, if you if it's if the pace is a little too fast for your, for your taste, you can watch those videos where I went into more in-depth uh, discussion and more in-depth explanations. Hopefully, uh, you found it helpful. If you're interested in working with me on a one-to-one -one basis, if you want to hire my services, here's my phone number, 1-800-808-PREP. Here's my email address, prepsat at aol.com. Get hold of me. I'll be more than happy to help you in your preparation for the GRE.
Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off on problem number from problem number eight on page one nineteen. All right, I know.